press subscribe button followed by bell button and click all to get more topic dipole induced dipole okay this is the second type as i have listed earlier now what is this dipole and induced dipole in which type of molecule this is the reality dipole dipole moment that uh, dipole dipole attraction i explained you before this it is your theory it is a theory there is what there is a verbal explanation satisfactory explanation for some reality reality was what h2s was having more boiling point than h ph3 and hcl less boiling point hbr more boiling point hi more boiling point that is reality and that could not be explained by valence bond theory that could not be explained by molecular orbital theory so the theory is that dipole dipole intermolecular force of attraction now i am giving you one example that bromine in water okay when you go to the laboratory you will find a bottle containing bromine water it is a bromine water it is orange red color that what is what is what do you understand from that bromine is soluble in water bromine is soluble in water that is why in reality you are having bromine water it is a transparent homogeneous mixture solution that means soluble so bromine is soluble what is bromine molecule br br okay so i will use a uniform cloud this is representing the electron cloud this this line i am using is representing the electron cloud what you understand both the side electron cloud is same because this bromine atom electronegativity electronegativity and this bromine atom electronegativity that the electronegativity both are same both are same we have both a bromine atom so as far as the pulling of electron cloud is concerned both will pull equally so both the side of the electron cloud will be uniform so i have drawn a uniform cloud but what about the water in case of water i told you oxygen is having more so oxygen side this is oxygen hey here one more oxygen also will be there h2o so here oxygen is more electronegative so it will pull the electron cloud strongly so it will be positive side on this hydrogen less electron density electron density low electron density high so here it is a dipole or we can call it as water is a polar molecule polar molecule and this is a non polar molecule non polar mean no polarity equal amount of electron density so it is a non polar molecule so now non polar molecule that is why it is a question polar polar molecule means dipole dipole interaction but one non polar highly soluble in water that means the solubility is they attract each other they like they have more affinity so they like each other mean there must be an attraction it's a fact because practical uh, practical proof i am giving bromine water is preferred homogeneous highly soluble and reason cannot be explained by dipole dipole attraction so the second theory is dipole induced dipole see this is no dipole non polar molecule and here polar molecule dipole huh? so when they come see this will come closer to each other because you put the bromine uh, liquid bromine is actually a highly volatile liquid when you pour inside water they come closer to each other not so that time when you are stirring they will come closer to each other that time what happens see now the same thing when they come closer to each other now see this is water molecule i represented the electron cloud this is h2o delta plus and delta minus so what happened this positive charge when this positive charge will pull when they come closer as the here also the inter interaction energy is at the end of the distance of 6 very very close you can understand mathematically this is the distance between the molecule raised to the power 6 in the bottom if it is too small the distance is very very small that time only this will be somewhat stronger at this range it is decided so it should be very close when they come very close this positive feeling will definitely attract some electron cloud from here na so this bromine bromine which was earlier non polar becomes polar 
Now this is not by nature it is polar, it is non-polar, so polarity has been induced, so it is induced polarity, that measurement is by dipole moment, so it is a induced dipole, this is by nature it was dipole, it is dipole by nature, but this is by nature it is not polar, no dipole, but it is induced by this, magnetism is induced your study. One non-magnet, one iron piece is there, another one magnet you go and touch that, it in far distance it will not take place, you have to go to some place where the interaction is becoming effective. So when you touch the iron bar with the magnet, that iron bar which is actually not a magnet will also now attract the pins because in, in that magnetism has been induced. Who has induced? Magnet only can induce magnetism. Who can induce the dipole? Dipole only can induce the, uh, uh, means dipole only can induce the dipole on the other molecule which is not having dipole. Okay, so this is induced dipole and between their interaction. Now see, this is delta minus, delta plus. That is, okay, this is on situation. It is not by nature. It is on situation when they come closer, it takes place, it is attracting. Now see, this theory is very well account for, accounting for why bromine is soluble in water. Okay. So now, if this is possible by the fact that bromine is dissolving in water, one of the examples, many more examples are that. But what are the factors at which this will be effective? Factors at which or on which it is depending on, this interaction depending on and the first one is by from the polar molecule side from the polar molecule some factors molecule and another one is from non-polar molecule non-polar molecule, this point you please note down in polar molecule that dipole moment should be high this dipole moment, I, that's why I told you, you should have a previous knowledge about the polarity, polarization, dipole. Dipole moment is actually measure of polarization. More is the dipole moment, more is the polar molecule, more is, more is the polarity of the molecule. Okay, so more polarity, the molecule, polar molecule, should be more polar, dipole moment should be high. So that, see that one iron, iron piece, again I am coming to the example. Now you try with this magnet, this is the magnet, you try with this magnet, magnetism is induced. Okay, now you take another one magnet and this magnet you say now also magnetism is induced but this is more powerful magnet. So at, that means accordingly the induction also will be more powerful and then the induce also. So once their mu is high and this also getting some mu temporarily that also will be high. If this mu is less and that induced mu is also less, that means less versus that attraction will be less strong and more means more attraction will be there. Understand? So here polar molecule should have more dipole moment, therefore more dipole will be induced, attraction will be stronger. And another one is from non-polar non -polar molecule, whether Br2 will be more or I2, suppose you are iodine you dissolve in water. How much it will dissolve? More soluble or less soluble? You will understand from this. Because other side water only pulling. Same dipole moment. But here one is Br2 and another one is iodine. Iodine also non-polar. But how strongly it will be induced? Here the size should be large. Why the size should be large? So that the uh, induction will be more because if the size is more, electrons are diffused. Electron means electron cloud. Electron cloud is diffused. Electron cloud is diffused. Actually, what this polar molecule is doing on the non-polar molecule? The polar molecule is that what is that? It is distorting, distorting the electron cloud here, it is distorting and if the electron cloud comes one side more if it is attacked. Suppose the same bromine molecule is attacked by this water H O H this is negative end, this is positive end. Uh, if this attracted here what will happen in this bromine molecule what happen? This will become plus, this will become minor, and then they will attract. You see that here. It becomes negative, attack inside. Here it is becoming positive, bromine becoming positive because which end is attacking the product? 
Okay, so here actually what is done on the non-polar molecule, the electron cloud is distorted. It was uniformly present but now distorted, ununiform, it is made, ununiformity is made. Okay, so here the larger the size of the non-polar molecule, easily it can be polarized. Okay, so here you easily polarizable. Polarizable means what? The distortion, getting the electron cloud is disturbed, no? that is polarizable. If the size is more, the nucleus and the electron attraction will be less. Size is large, it means that attraction will be less. That means that this polar molecule can easily disturb that. And that is only polarizability of this non-polar molecule. So the size of the non-polar molecule should be large so that it can be easily polarized. Okay, so these are the things it will decide. Now you will be able to answer bromine is more soluble in water or I2 iodine is more soluble in water. Okay, if, by using only this concept. But in case of iodine is a crystal and even lattice enthalpy also will come into play a role. Okay, so by only by intermolecular forces of attraction, dipole, induced dipole concept, we will be able to say. Okay, note on this. Next is London force, also called dispersion force. Uh, before going to that, I will give you an example so that you will understand what is the need of this third theory. Okay, uh, when you are compressing hydrogen gas and uh, you cool it, reduce the temperature and increase the pressure. Similarly for noble gases, all of you I hope must be knowing about uh, the liquefaction of gases. Okay, even this uh, noble gases are liquefied at a different temperature, that is why we can separate them from the atmospheric air. Yeah. Okay, so that fact is whether means whether it is a polar gas or non-polar gas, we can compress them and liquefy. If it is a polar gas, HCl can be easily liquefied. HCl can be easily liquefied. Why? When you are pressing, when you are compressing, the molecules come closer and that uh, the dipole dipole attraction becomes effective, they become liquid. Okay. But now, how you will account for hydrogen gas? It is a purely non-polar. Or the uh, monoatomic molecules, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, they are liquefied. When they are, when they are actually, they are a single atom, stable, so we call it as a molecule. So these monoatomic molecules, noble gases, when they are compressed, they are becoming liquid. That it is a reality. Now tell me, can this reality happen without any reason? And can this reality, that is the liquefaction, liquefaction means I told you as per the properties, characteristic properties of liquids are concerned, the intermolecular force of attraction is very strong, but less than solid, that's all. That means here, the intermolecular force of attraction between this non-polar molecule is strong, maybe at a high pressure, low temperature time, that is condition. But by nature, they develop some kind of very strong intermolecular force of attraction. Cannot be explained by dipole-dipole because they are not polar molecule. Cannot be explained by uh, dipole, induced dipole because they are not having dipole and neighbor also no dipole. In case of bromine, we dissolved in water. So water was acting as a dipole. But now I am talking about pure helium. Pure hydrogen, that is, they are non-polar, there is no neighbor with polarity, that means dipole, induced dipole attraction also cannot be given as a reason theory for explaining the reality. Reality is they are liquefied, they attract very strongly. So the third theory is proposed, that is proposed by the Fritz London, in honor, that is a German physicist, that in honor of his name only, this is called the London force. Dispersion force because it will be dispersion related. Okay, and it is also called by one name that I will after explaining I will tell you. Okay, so for that you take I am taking that monoatomic gas. Okay, so you take a, a neon helium means only two electrons will be there. So I take neon. Okay, neon will have ten electrons. And this is the electron cloud I am writing. Okay, this, this is not a circle. It is a three-dimensional spherical shape representing the electron cloud inside. Okay, this is the electron cloud. How many electrons are there? Ten electrons are there. 
Okay, now see that the reality should be accounted. So what, how they think and give the reason. You see, you all know after studying the atomic structure, quantum mechanical theory, Isenberg, uncertainty, principle, all these things, all of you know that the electron surround the nucleus is not stationary. And it cannot be seen by anybody. It can, nobody can trace out the path also. But you believe, as per the model proposed, you believe that it is moving very fast around this nucleus. That's all. Very fast it is moving. Now you imagine, imagine because you can't uh, uh, practically stop the movement, but you imagine, imagine, not that, uh, sir, how can we explain imagination and all? No, I'm telling you, imagination means you imagine a fraction of second, that is one instant you imagine. It may not stop, but at a, at a particular uh, instant, what will be that? Do we think that here one electron, the 10 electron will be like this, and here one, and here one, and here one, and here one. It is, it is, it is called the symmetrical. But it will be going on moving now. So at one stage, what happened? That I am telling at an instant. At an instant, it is a possibility because you are bringing another one molecule closer because you are compressing. Okay, when you are compressing, here at a particular instant, here what happened? This side, you see, it become at a particular instant. See, I am bringing at a particular instant. At a particular instant, that neon nucleus, there is a chance for this. Okay, so now I go for this diagram. This is a deformed. Who is deformed? Electron cloud. Electron cloud. This is at a particular time you imagine. And this side delta minus. There is more cloud. More electron cloud. And due to unsymmetrical distribution. Okay. So when they are going on moving. Every instant. Every instant you cannot say symmetrically. Both the sides electron is uniformly distributed. No. At definitely at a particular instant it will happen. That one side more electron cloud. And another side less electron cloud more electron cloud means uh, here the nucleus plus 10 that it will electron cloud more means it will get some negative feeling that you find here less electron cloud means that the nucleus will dominate some positive feeling will be there okay so this is at an instant and this this is a dipole now and this dipole is called by the name instantaneous dipole okay instantaneous dipole remember that Okay, now I am taking this instantaneous dipole developed in one neon molecule. Okay, so delta plus and delta minus. This is instantaneous dipole developed. Now, when, when you are compressing, in one molecule instantaneous dipole developed, mean in other molecules also it will be developed because there also at the instant it will happen. But when they come closer and what happens, this dipole will play a role on the neighboring molecule. See the neighboring molecule, suppose at a distance, far distance, let's write it here, this is another one neon molecule in case. Uniformly imagine and then when they come close that actually it is very much affecting only at the range of 500 picometer. Again it is 1 by the interaction energy is directly proportional to 1 by d to the power 6. Approximately at the range of 500 picometer only they will be affected. So when they come closer now see this is this is delta plus delta minus of one neon molecule and then another neon molecule also will develop a polarity. This is delta because this electron, this is electron cloud mode. This is not the negative electron I am saying, the cloud, the shade is electron cloud is more. So in this molecule it will ripple the electron cloud, so the electron cloud will go this side. Electron cloud will go this side, nucleus will be here and delta minus this side. So now see what is the attraction. This is, this is, I told you, instantaneous dipole. But in, what is this? This is, the instantaneous dipole is inducing here. So this is induced by this, induced, instantaneous dipole. Okay, so now what is this attraction called? This attraction is called by the name, another name. What is that? Instantaneous Dipole is attracting induced instantaneous dipole. So this London force can also be called as instantaneous dipole induced instantaneous dipole force. 
It is actually weakness. Now I am coming to the strength of these forces. You yourself should have understood. That is why in every discussion I did not mention. Now after completing these three types, you can easily tell which is the strongest one among these three. Dipole, dipole, polar, polar. By nature polar, polar, strongest. The second one is one is polar, another one is non-polar. So that means that polar and induced polarity. That means dipole, induced dipole, second strongest. And here that in both the cases instantaneously slightly developed. That means it will be the weakest one out of the three. So London force is the weakest one. Okay. So the order is dipole, dipole is stronger and dipole induced dipole is again little weaker and instantaneous dipole and induced in, induced instantaneous dipole that last one that is the weakest one okay right so these are things you must remember but now see i have given some example for you to understand this is n pentane isopentane and neopentane look at this example i will come to you Look at this example and study that. Okay. These examples I have given to understand that factors on which these, this particular London force depends on. What are the factors? That means which factor will make this London force stronger or weaker? The first one is molecular size. Molecular size, you tell me which molecular size will be larger or smaller in favor? It definitely it is larger. Okay, if the molecule is large, what happened? Molecule is large means what you can say that that electron is for instantaneously it is polarized, na? that polarization will be easier. So if the molecule is instantaneously having some polarity and it is inducing to the neighboring molecule, if that molecule is having a larger size, that induction will be easier. That is induction means they are polarizing the non-polar situation. So the polarizing, that is polarizing will be easier if the size is larger because the size is larger when I told the electron cloud will be having loose attachment with the nucleus. And the size large means the electron density is low, that is dispersed or larger region, larger volume they are present, the density of electron average will be less, so he can easily polarize them because the uh, instantaneous dipole is the weakest dipole and it has to induce in the neighboring molecule mean that molecule should be larger, okay. So molecular size larger, you see I am not telling you, just look at this, here you see, methane. Silane, germane, and all of them are H4, 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 same. Only this is different. And see the boiling point. Boiling point is low, higher, higher. That also not very close. The significant amount of difference is that. That means what is that? The size increases. That means that this, this methane molecule, if I want to say as a cement, I means as a, a spherical manner, it is like this. That is next one means this is big size molecule and germane means it will be larger than this. See that as the size of so this is CH4 and this is SiH4 and this is germane GH4 and as the size increases, size increases. And when the size increases, this London force will be increasing because easily polarizable, easily polarizable. That the induction can be done easily. I, I hope all of you can understand. The second one is the electron cloud. The electron means the number of electron you take. Yes. Number of electrons. More is the electron means what you know that more is you know, one two, two is two, you know how to arrange that the number of electron increases means that there will be again it is size based only. But in terms of number of electrons I explained. You see, in the helium will have only two electrons. These two electrons are in the S orbital, very tightly packed with the nucleus. They cannot be easily dispersed. They cannot be easily disturbed. They cannot be easily polarized to one side and other side like that. But next one, neon, you see 10 electrons, 18 electrons, 36 electrons. That means as the number of electrons increases, they are easily polarizable. They are non-polar. Only you have to say instantaneous dipole and that instantaneous dipole will induce. For inducing, it should be polarizable highly. The polarizability is depending upon number of electrons. More number of electrons means more diffused. 
again size based only don't confuse okay so when the number of electron increases in boiling point increases because the polarizability increases london force will become stronger and stronger this is one thing the next one is the, the this is to take it as a same point number of electrons so the second one is molecular structure for this with this i will Find of this molecular structure for that you look at this here can you say the size difference see C five H twelve all pentane normal pentane isopentane neopentane all of them are same see that if you take the molecular mass five times twelve sixty plus twelve seventy two unified mass all of them are seventy two unified mass molecular mass same size same all that you feel that it is same only. But here, see the difference in boiling point. N pentane lowest, that means uh, highest, and then iso pentane slightly smaller, and neo pentane very small. Why? Because here you have to understand. I told you, London force is an attraction between two species which are non-polar. I explain in terms of the instantaneous. Dipole, both are non-polar. Now, so what happens? This interaction takes place whenever they come closer, and this is this interaction. Now, this is interacting, interacting surface area. Remember that. When see that when a molecule is these two, my fingers are the molecular shape, and these two are coming. Means you can understand what is the interaction surface. This is the interaction surface area. Suppose if the molecule is this much size. And the shape is like this, and now the molecules comes and interact. You see that the interaction area is more. More is the surface area. Note down the point. More is the surface area of interaction. More will be more stronger will be the London force. Then boiling point will be higher. Okay, so here, though their mass is same, the mass is same. Number of electrons it will be same only. Because there are isomers, number of electrons will be same, but only thing is the surface area of contact differs. It's a very important question. Just listen to that. See, this is CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. This is N pentane, N pentane. Iso pentane in IUPAC discussion, I told you, and iso means the second last atom. Will have one methyl group that is called iso. The second last atom having one methyl branch, CH two, CH three. See, this is iso. And what is neo? Neo means what? The second last will have two methyl group. And the CH three. This is neo pentane. Now. What is happening here? This is this. See, see neo pentane small, very less boiling point. Neo. See, as the here note on the point, as the branch here only one branch, one branch, and here there are two branches. You take this as a straight one. This as a straight one. This as a straight one. Okay. So as the branch increases, see the size. This is the size of the money. And here, what happened? Here, the size will be what like this, and this slightly one bulging will be the that's all. Otherwise, you see the size smaller. Here, what happened? It is some small bulging only that this is bulging only the branches. So this is the see as the number of note down as the number of branching increases, the molecule become more and more compact. This is a longer one, very large surface area of contact. These two, this is one molecule. This one molecule means this much surface area will contact. Here, another one molecule means only this much will contact. This I am trying this is bigger, but it's spherical shape means what is the surface area decreases. Is that another one spherical shapes come in only? This is the surface they can interact. Okay, as the number of branching increases, the molecule become more and more con uh, compact. And the area of contact, that surface area decreases. London force is becoming weaker and weaker, and therefore boiling point decreases. See this without branch, one branch, two branches, and this is more compact, lowest surface area of contact, therefore weakest London force. All are London force. Why all are London force? They are hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons are non-polar. Remember that non-polar. So all of them are London force, but the surface area more means more stronger London force. Otherwise, okay. 
So with this side, just to complete the uh, three water wall forces, only hydrogen bonding, I want to teach you separately because a lot of examples I have to discuss along with that. So before that, I just to put forward some question that you get ready with the answer. In the next video, we will get the answer for that. The question number one is, H2O is a liquid. H2S, hydrogen sulfide is a gas. You think whether you can explain this liquid means very strong attraction. Gas means weak attraction. I am talking about at room temperature. And why I told H2O and H2S and H2O and H2S, both of them are in the same group, group number 16. And here is oxygen, sulfur, this is hydrogen, water, H2. Here H2 means hydrogen sulfide, H2S we like, H2O, H2S. Means same group and electronegativity of the sulfur will be slightly less, but okay. And top to bottom electronegativity decreases. But this is a liquid and this is a gas. You cannot apply the molecular size here. Size is bigger. That means this should have more interaction. If you consider the size concept for this van der Waal forces. But here it is having stronger attraction liquid. It is a gas. What is the answer? You just think that these three van der Waal forces will be helping you for answering? No. Then how to answer will think. Okay, there is another one theory in one. Similarly, you take sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is first question highly soluble in water. Why? Think about that. Can you explain by using any one of these forces? You think and keep it. But the sodium chloride, same sodium chloride is insoluble in benzene liquid or carbon disulfide, CS2. In CS2 liquid, it is also a solvent, but the sodium chloride is insoluble. And uh, in water, it is highly soluble. Can you explain this solubility difference by using any of these three intermolecular forces of attraction collectively called uh, Van der Waals forces? Think. If it is not possible, then who will explain you? Wait for the next video.